The news at 11 begins with breaking election news in Virginia. Good evening. I'm Leslie Foster. For the first time in 26 years, Democrats have taken control of the Virginia legislature. Now, this is a big deal. Virginia is the only state trying to flip control of both chambers, and this could foreshadow what's to come in the 2020 presidential election. The race that gave the Democrats the Senate is this one. Democrat John Bell defeated Republican Gary Higgins. He will represent parts of Loudoun and Prince William counties. And a lot of you are talking about this House of Delegates race in Fairfax and Prince William counties, getting a lot of money, a lot of attention. Democrat Dan Helmer beat incumbent Timothy Hugo. Hugo has been in office since 2003. Democrat Danica Rome is leading Kelly McGinn to keep her seat in the House. She is the first openly transgender person to be elected to the Virginia General Assembly. Republican Kirk Cox held on to his seat in the House, but with Democrats controlling both chambers, he will no longer serve as the Speaker. All right, so we want to talk about the balance of power in Virginia. We just saw it change in a huge way. Democrats now control the Commonwealth's House and Senate for the first time in more than 20 years. Mike Valerio is here with more on that. Mike. Yeah, Leslie, and to put this in perspective, 1993 is the last time that Democrats have held all of these seats. But we want to talk about the state Senate first. And all you need to know is that Democrats needed one flip seat to take control and they found one of those seats in the seat we were just talking about here in Loudoun and Prince William counties. John Bell soundly defeated Gary Higgins. And once that happened, we realized that Democrats were on track to take the Senate. So we started the night like this, 20 Republicans and 19 Democrats in the Senate. And if Democrats picked up one seat over here, they'd have 20. And then you add in Democratic Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, who presides over the Senate, that automatically gives Democrats an extra vote, putting them over the edge with 21 votes in the 40 seat chamber. OK, Mike, so let's talk about this. This Senate seat you were talking yep. about. Um, it's a big win for Democrats, but this could be bad news for the president. President yeah. Trump. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We, we weren't sure if he would come up in conversation, of course. Just kidding. This is a huge referendum on his race. I mean, the suburbs are a battleground area for 2020. Loudoun and Prince William counties are so competitive. And the Republican candidate here, Gary Higgins, is the only Republican who President Trump explicitly backed on Twitter. Twitter for this Virginia election cycle. So Higgins was defeated. Democrats will say that in a competitive suburban district like the, district like the one that we have here, Trump touching any of those candidates is essentially toxic. All right, let's talk the big picture now, right? Yeah. With Democrats taking control of both uh, both the, the House and the Senate, what does this mean for Virginians? Well, I think you have to keep in mind all of the proposals that have been on the table that have failed in recent years under Republican control. These proposals will have new life. When you think of gun control, abortion rights, protections for the LGBT community, and women against discrimination, all of those have consistently been voted down by Republicans. Now, with Democrats in the driver's seat, all of that changes. Expect the governor tomorrow, early in the morning, to announce all of these initiatives well, coming back to the table. One last thing to point out here. At this point, there are no Republicans representing yeah. Northern Virginia. That's right. We have Dan Helmer, who we talked about at the beginning of the uh -huh. broadcast. We thought, you know, perhaps there was some internal polling that Democrats were looking at, pointing to the fact that he might lose. But Tim Hugo, Leslie, is the only Republican who, up until tonight, represented Northern Virginia in the State House. He lost handily to Dan Helmer who is an Oxford grad, a West Point grad, an Afghanistan, an Afghanistan veteran. So it was an impressive campaign on the part of Dan Helmer, and he vanquished Tim Hugo. There are no Republicans representing Northern Virginia. It is all blue, a blue wave if there ever was one. Wow, we said it was a big deal, and you just broke Huge down for deal. us why yeah. it is for sure. Mike Valerio, thanks so much.